Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on forming an expression for total quantity or cost involving two variables. Now we've seen before that variables are just when we use letters to represent unknown values. So we've got x apples, we don't know how many apples we've got. And in fact in this question here, we're never going to know how many apples there are. We're just keeping it as x apples because we don't know. There might be some additional information that comes in later that allows us to work out how many apples there are. But for the moment we don't know, we're just going to call it x apples. We're using a letter, a variable to represent an unknown value. Now we want to turn this sentence into an algebraic expression. So let's think about the information we've got. You buy x apples costing 40p each and y pairs costing 30p each. What is the total cost in pence? Now if I said there were three apples costing 40p each, what would be the total cost of the apples? Where well, you would do three times 40p, which is 120p or one pounds 20. So we times those together, don't we? Now, just because that's an x and rather than a number, we still times them together, things don't change. So we've got x times the 40, so x times 40p, and generally we don't put units within an algebraic expression. And then we've also got and, so we're adding to the cost of this, y pairs costing 30p. So we've also got y things each costing 30 and to find the total cost of the pairs we do the number of pairs multiply the cost which would give us the total cost of the pairs. Now we can simplify this because when you do x times 40 we could write this as 40x. 40x just means 40 lots of x and that's what we got. We got 40 lots of x. In general in algebra we try to avoid these time symbols and we write things next to each other to mean that we're multiplying them together. So 40 next to x just means 40 lots of x, 40 times x, which is exactly what we've got here. We always put the number before the variable. And it's the same here, y times 30 is just 30y. And that is the final expression. We got 40p multiplied the number of apples, plus we've also got the cost of 30p times the number of pairs, and that will be the total cost. We've got a similar thing here. Cups are sold in packs and boxes. There are five cups in each pack and 10 cups in each box. You buy P packs and B boxes. Write an expression for the total number of cups you buy. Now, if I was to tell you that there were 10 packs of cups and there's five cups in each pack, how many cups would there be? Well, you just do 10 times five. So again, we're multiplying these together. So we've got five cups in each pack and we're timesing that by P because there's P packs. And we've also got the cups in the boxes as well. So we're gonna add on the cups in the boxes. We've got 10 cups in each box and you've got B boxes. If there was three boxes, you just do three times 10. But because we got B boxes, we do B times 10 or 10 times B. It's the same thing, isn't it? B times 10 is the same as 10 times B. And then we can just simplify this. So five times P, we can ignore the time symbol because five P just means five times P in algebra. The next to each other means your times going together. And then we got 10 lots of B, which we can write as 10 B. And we can't simplify that any further. These are different variables, so we can't collect these terms together. They're not like terms. And that's the final answer. We've got expressions to represent this kind of textual information here.